we're joined now by Michael Watley, uh, who is chairman of the RNC. And we're going to get into a lot of different stories. But I want to start, you know the state of North Carolina very well. Uh, Trump won North Carolina in 2016 and 2020. How do you think Trump is looking in North Carolina, Chairman, uh, in 2024, based on what you see? Better than we were in either 2016 or in 2020. Um, and I would say that based on the polling uh, that we're watching right now, uh, where we're actually pulling ahead of, of where we did uh, four years ago or eight years ago. Uh, when I look at the enthusiasm that we see on the ground, um, I think that uh, we feel very good about this state. You know, and the fundamentals are really important here. You know, North Carolina uh, is a state that really believes uh, in law and order. They back the blue. Uh, and it is also the state with the heaviest percentage of military families. We talk about soldiers, veterans, and military families uh, more than any other state in the country. This is a state that understands uh, peace through strength and understands what it means to have a president who really, truly backs our soldiers. Um, so, you know, we feel that the fundamentals here feel really good. We've just seen a number of polls that have come out in the last week showing him up, you know, two points, three points, one point, uh, fairly consistently uh, with, a, with a small lead. But, uh, you know, we won it by three and a half points in uh, 2016. We won it by a point and a half in 2020. Uh, and I feel like we're, we're in pretty solid shape here. So that's huge because if Trump wins North Carolina and Georgia, which I think he's likely to do, you can tell us what you're seeing there. He's got a lot of different pathways at that point to be elected president. Yeah, we agree. You know, and honestly, if he wins every state that he won in 16 and 20, plus uh, Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, then we have enough to get to 270. And uh, so Chairman that Watt really is, is, is the best place in the map right now. Chairman Watley uh, with us now. Appreciate you being with us, sir. Uh, the Situation in Pennsylvania. Um, Clay has said, I, I agree with this. I think that this is pretty clear. It is the most important battleground state, perhaps. Uh, it feels like whoever wins Pennsylvania probably wins the whole thing. I was wondering if you could just give us a sense as to what does the Republican, we got a very important Senate seat up there, some congressional races that are, that are critical. Um, what does the Republican ground game and, and plan look like from now to Election Day in the state Pennsylvania that could determine the whole thing. Yeah, pedal to the metal. I mean, we're going to absolutely be hammered down in Pennsylvania from now through Election Day. Uh, the sheer number of visions that you are seeing there from Donald Trump, from J.D. Vance, from a number of different surrogates and, and uh, uh, other folks that support him across the state uh, is going to be very regular. Uh, we've already seen him a bunch and we're going to see him a bunch up there. I've been doing uh, regular events up there. We've had RFK Jr. We've had Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, and so I expect the presence is going to be there. Uh, the grassroots program uh, is very advanced at this point in time. Trump Force 47. Uh, we are recruiting and training thousands of volunteers right now uh, to make phone calls and knock on doors and make sure that they're bringing out the low propensity voters. That's the biggest target uh, that we're making sure, you know, once you get your base voters in, you got to make sure you get those low propensity guys off the couch. Uh, so that's the basis for what we're trying to build up there. We've got a really good partnership with the uh, Pennsylvania uh, GOP and uh, feel really good about where we are. And, you know, when we talk about polling versus 16 and 20, uh, probably no state where we are in better shape uh, today than where we were uh, from 2016 and 2020. What just, you know, you mentioned this, I think it's so important because we get a lot of emails, uh, Chairman Watley, about, you know, I, I want to help. I want to get involved for, for people who live in Pennsylvania. we got a lot of states in Pennsylvania, particularly out west, uh, where there's critical terrain here uh, for this upcoming election. Where do they go to kind of get in the system and what can they do? Yeah, there's two things that they can do. So the first is our grassroots program. We call it Trump Force 47. They can go to TrumpForce47.com and you, you sign up. Uh, we will reach back out to you. We'll make you a Trump Force team captain. Uh, and the thing that we're going to ask you to do is go get 10 members of your community to commit to vote. It's, it's a pretty basic. Just go talk to your friends, your family members, your colleagues, your coworkers. Get them to commit to vote. And then we're going to ask you to do 25 or 50 or 100 uh, as, as people keep kind of moving up the chain, anybody who gets 100 commitments before Election Day, we're going to invite them down to Miralago for our victory party. I think it's going to be a fantastic 
opportunity for people to get involved. The other thing that is equally as important for us is our election integrity program. And so people can go to protectthevote.com and they can sign up and they can get trained and they can be a poll worker or a poll observer, uh, which is just tremendously important when we talk about uh, making sure that we're going to protect the ballot uh, and we're going to uh, let everybody know uh, that their vote is going to count and it's going to count once. Look, I- I've talked about this. My wife cared about this and she is now working at our local voting uh, precinct and she'll be there all day on election day. And I would encourage everybody out there who blows bucking me up all the time mm-hmm. about being concerned about rigged elections to go ahead and volunteer yourself in your local communities to pay attention to how the vote's going. We've talked yeah, a lot about this. but critical. I'm, absolutely critical. We've talked a lot about this on the show, but I want people to hear it from you, and they're probably going to get tired of us talking about it. Buck and I are voting early. Uh, we have seen the data that the earlier you can bank your vote, the better it is for the Trump team because it allows low propensity voters to then be focused on and for overall turnout to go up. What would you tell people out there, Chairman Watley, who are nervous about voting early about what they can mean by getting their ballots banked early and how would you allay their concerns? Well, what I would say is just listen to what President Trump has said, point blank. It is great if you want to vote early. It's great if you want to vote by mail. It's great if you want to vote on election day. The the key is you have to make a plan and execute the plan and make sure that you deliver your vote. You know, when you think about the the mechanics on, on early voting, you know, there's a lot of people who just cannot vote on election day. I'm one of them. I don't know where I'm going to be on election day. I could be in Arizona. I could be in Nevada. I could be, you know, in New Hampshire. Um, so I, the first day of early voting, I will be there and I will cast my vote for it. Uh, it is safe and it is secure. Um, the other thing that, that really comes out of it is we spend a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort going out and getting people to vote, uh, you know, before they, they cast their vote, whether it's by mail or early or on election day. And if we're spending time and resources talking to a voter and they go vote 10 days early, that's 10 days where I don't have to spend money on them. I can actually go spend money to talk to uh, the low propensity voters and I can make sure that we're going to get them up and we're going to get them out. And frankly, we can help activate them to go have other conversations as well. So there's there's a lot of ancillary benefits to it. Uh, We don't want to necessarily cannibalize, you know, people who want to vote on Election Day. We're not telling you don't do it. Uh, But really what we're trying to do is get people who won't vote on Election Day to go vote earlier, go vote by mail. And that way, this is an additive thing. You know, we believe in politics through addition, but every dollar I don't have to spend convincing you to vote because you already have is a dollar I can spend on somebody else. And on the election integrity side of things, I remember you spoke to us at the uh, RNC in Milwaukee about uh, poll monitors. How is that program going? And and I'm sure you get this. I, I would be willing to bet your your office has been uh, deluged uh, last, well, you know, months, maybe longer uh, with people who are very concerned about what we could just call irregularities or shenanigans, Chairman Watley. What what can you say to people about making sure that only legal ballots will be counted in this election? Yeah, so two key metrics that, that we're tracking and we're working on. Uh, what we're seeing in terms of making sure we have the right laws, rules, and regulations put in place uh, in every state, is, is the states are making dramatic improvements. Uh, some of them are doing it voluntarily and working with us. Other ones we're having to sue. I filed 115 lawsuits uh, as the general counsel and now as the chair of the RNC, and we're getting some very important wins, uh, making sure uh, that we're keeping the basic rules of the road in place. So only American citizens can vote. You got to have a voter ID. We want the states to clean up the voter rolls and where we have mail-in balloting, we want basic protections on those. So really good progress that we're making there. Not enough. Uh, we've still got work to do. We've got a number of states, you know, particularly Pennsylvania and Michigan, that keep fighting us on it. So we end up in court quite a bit. Um, but but even there, we're starting to get some some pretty significant wins. The other metric is that we want to be in the room, right? We want to be in the room with volunteers and attorneys anytime a vote is cast or counted. Since Laura Trump and I put this program together. We said we were going to get 100,000 people to sign up for that program. Very excited to say we've got 175,000 people already across the country who have signed up, and we've got 5,000 of them in every single one of our battleground states. 
and we're continuing to recruit. We're continuing to do more. Uh, Laura Trump, uh, Matt Whitaker, who was the acting attorney general for President Trump, Pam Bondi, uh, who was the attorney general down in Pennsylvania, myself, have had a nationwide tour. Uh, we call it the Protect the Vote Tour. We were just in New Hampshire last night uh, and, uh, and, and having a fantastic series of conversations all across the country, making sure that we're raising awareness of this and that we're getting people to sign up. We know Trump had the rally last night in uh, Long Island. We know, as just talking with you, Georgia, North Carolina, Nevada, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, all the seven battleground states. Where else would you tell us? You just mentioned New Hampshire. Should we be paying attention there? Where is momentum that maybe might surprise people a little bit outside of the seven battleground states that everybody talks about? You know, Virginia, we're seeing some pretty good results. We like the numbers there. And we've got a guy in Glenn Youngkin who showed us how you can win in Virginia as a Republican. The guy has just absolutely transformed politics in that state. Uh, and he's been a great partner. And so we're working with him right now. Uh, so I really am, am, am very bullish about what we can try and do on the ground in Virginia. New Hampshire, uh, we, you know, we feel really, really good about it. I spent the day up there yesterday, had a number of meetings and events. Um, and, and, you know, we feel good about what's going on there. You know, in the stretch that the president wants to continue to talk about uh, is, is a place like New Jersey, where we're actually showing, you know, some of the polling showing him that's uh, inside the margin. Um, you know, and, and, you know, when you have a rally with 107,000 people, you kind of got to believe that you're doing something there. Um, you know, it may be a stretch, but you know what? Uh, we're going to have uh, those conversations. You know, and I think we're spending time in New York. He was in Nassau yesterday. Uh, we've been in California because we've got congressional districts there that really, truly matter. Um, and so even if we're not going to be able to carry the state, uh, we do feel like we're in a great position to carry those congressional districts, which we need uh, in order to expand our majority in the House. So we like the map. I mean, we're playing offense right now. I think that uh, Kamala Harris and the Democrats are playing defense, uh, especially when you look at the seven battleground states uh, where we're showing, you know, probably slim. Uh, but very durable leads in five of them, and we're basically tied in the other two right now. Chairman Watley of the uh, RNC, great to have you on, sir. Uh, you know, stay on the mission, and we'll talk to you again, hopefully before the election, and uh, we'll be celebrating soon thereafter. I tell you, I really, truly appreciate the opportunity to talk to you, but more importantly, to talk to all of your listeners. Uh, and and we certainly hope that everybody will go to uh, you know protectthevote dot com or trumpforce forty seven dot com and sign up and, and join the fight. There you go. You heard him, everybody. Go join up. Thanks so much, Chairman. Look, technology can be our best friend. The advances made by companies like Rapid Radios in their own reinvention of the modern-day walkie-talkie is a great example. These are the perfect combination of a cell phone and a walkie-talkie. You can make a direct connection between yourself and the person you want to stay in touch with with a single push of a button. Rapid Radio's walkie-talkies deliver connections with family members or friends that have a Rapid Radio walkie-talkie as well. They could be hundreds of miles away, if not more. These push-to-talk devices are really helpful to have. With the threat of cyber attacks on our infrastructure and the number of weather-driven outages we've had, you can rely on Rapid Radios to provide communication nationwide. They're also made in America. Rapid Radios are perfect in an emergency. They've got long-lasting batteries as long as five days of, uh, of battery power. They hold the charge for a long time. There's not a subscription or monthly fee ever. For a limited time, go to rapidradios.com and get up to 60% off. There's free UPS shipping and a free protection bag. Use code radio and get an extra 5% off.